First of all, thank you for your precious time that you are sharing with me together. And I'm super excited actually to talk today a little bit about my personal mission and vision uh, I have about cognitive robots and how cognitive uh, robots are actually the human wildcard in the digital Darwinism. So today, I mean, everything is about artificial intelligence or everyone is speaking about it. Many people see a big chance or a big opportunity in the technological, let's say, advancement of humankind. Others see a big danger or starting of fearing artificial intelligence. And I share actually some concerns. By that, I do not mean that artificial intelligence is taking over the world and starting a war against us humans. I actually mean, uh, or yeah, because um, I actually believe that humans are today smart enough to unplug just the whole thing when it's getting too danger. I hope we are. So I do share the concern um, of the, let's say, the creative um, uh, industries in particular, because we see that many kind of things or many kinds, uh, kind, let's say, things we like, like storytellers or movie writers, are getting concerned and worried about that they are not, let's say, or they get downgraded to not just this creative minds, but actually to feeders of artificial intelligence. I'm talking about photographers uh, graphers, and also designers because they can simply not really compete by time, I'm talking about time, against this artificial intelligence, let's say, um, picture generators, and there is many of them, even these pictures which you see today are mainly generated by artificial intelligence. And I'm talking about, for example, um, the, what is the, the, uh, the voice actors, which are simply uh, getting a lot of, let's say, competitor in artificial intelligence by having simple, very amazing text-to-speech generators, which are faster and much more low cost in the future than any other actors on this market. It is the worry that AI will take what is the most human on us. It means the thinking, being creative, having a lot of abilities of reacting on different kind of situations and art, I'm talking about art, which we're seeing here, culture, because in short, actually the ability that makes us humans as the crown of all creations on this earth. In Darwinism, uh, let's say, uh, or Darwinism sense, we are called the spare hat of evolution. We are dominating many much stronger creations or species on this earth, not because we are just intelligent and we are able to collect, uh, collect a lot of data in our heads. And um, it's actually because we were creative enough to develop tools, unfortunately also weapons. And that was actually the clear, let's say unfair advantage of us humans being today, let's say the, the the most, let's say, how to say it, um, like the like the most important species on this earth. <laughs> let's say like that. We didn't have the strength, but we had the creativity to harness the horses or the bulls, like on the wagon. And we were like creative enough to put, for example, donkeys drive the mill wheels. With artificial intelligence, we are creating something or we are working on a tool that is already more intelligent than we humans are. Especially, it has 
more, let's say, knowledge about many, many things that we can imagine today. Even this morning, I had this, we had here <laughs> a question like how to make the text a little bit bigger on, on the screen. I asked quickly ChatGPT, or because it was very simple, it gave me a very fast, let's say, description how to do it. Because artificial intelligence is just, because of all this data and collection, it can just react also much faster to make better decisions and faster decisions than a human being. Digital Darwinism means actually that an old technology um, is replaced by a new one, by a better one, a faster one. And there is right now not two technologies are competing about <laughs> simply like two technologies which are competing against each other. It's actually our human brain, our hum human brain with all its capabilities getting a big competition. For sure, one day there will be also possibilities for that, that we just simply tune our brain with new chips and somehow get this capabilities of AI into our head. But until there, I mean, until there, artificial intelligence is software. It's actually non-physical, virtual. We create gods which telling us humans what to do and how to do. Gods which actually never, let's say, which, <laughs> uh, which have never taken out the garbage because they simply can't. Because they have their like, legs or arms to be actually helpful today. Are we looking into the future where we humans are actually a harness to the wagon by AI? I mean, if our um, creative and cognitive skills are let's say, getting replaced by much faster and better artificial intelligence, what is actually the, like, what is our job or what is our thing on this earth? This is the question. This is why we at Neuro Robotics started to do exactly that. Give the artificial intelligence and body to actually enable artificial intelligence to be like to make things happen to make our world a better place to be able like we enable artificial intelligence to actually help and hear where we're living at and not telling us what to do ai should not tell us what to do but we should enable ai to do it itself to help us not just virtually, but actually also physically, because we all have physical bodies. And as long as we have them, we need uh, to have also uh, helpers, which can actually also help in this physical world. I mean, there where skilled workers are missing, where in the industries, in the service and service places, in, for example, giving us care in the future, or doing all these tasks which are danger, which humans, in my opinion, should, shouldn't do. That's exactly what we are doing at Neuro Robotics. I mean, we are doing robots or physical bodies in all kinds of shapes today, which makes sense in this advancement we have. And what's the difference of, of exactly these cognitive robots it's actually that these robots have the possibilities of perceiving the environment of today and being able to react on our flexible environment. So how do we do it? Very simple explained. We put sensors in form of sensors into robots. So it means we give them the ability of hearing, seeing and feeling. We added a brain which should actually take all this information and put reaction out of it, reacting on this flexible environment we are living in. Because that's the only way of having something which can help us one day 
something which is actually able to interact with you and me in a, in a nice and also safe way. I show you one of our products. <laughs> it looks a little bit different than I just talked about. It's just simple in ARM, but this is a product which is already on the market. It's a cognitive robot arm, the first cognitive robot arm on the market, which we call Myra. And Myra is already today, let's say, the personal helper arm, which can actually already today react on different kind of environments and something which is moving around, which is changing. But if we simply ask Myra today, because you can simply also talk to her, hey Myra, take the garbage out. What will she answer? She will answer, give me legs, because she does not have any. Because our world is actually made that uh, like, let's say, as ergonomic as possible for us humans. And that's why we do need other kind of bodies for artificial intelligence to be able to react on this flexible environment where we are living in. Something which looks a little bit closer to humans, but it's not the, the reason for that, to just copy humans. It's more about actually because our world is looking like that. We do have stairs today. We do have, have buttons. We do have all kind of, let's say, things which are actually made for human, um, let's say, for us humans. And this is exactly where we put our biggest efforts in. I mean, let's say four years ago when we started, we were not able to talk about humanoid robots because people got scared, because people think there is no sense behind. And today we see that we get the acceptance because people start understanding that artificial intelligence is there, it's virtual, it's real. And we do need to have a body to make them helpful for us. And how to do it? Actually, simply, we created new sensor technologies to make it as compact as possible to put it into simply a more ergonomic body which can actually work with us humans. You will see also there, the real one. And also created new actuators to make it somehow work in, um, like in, and make it as compact as possible. Because today, the robotics looks like that. We have a robot arm and what we simply do is we put all these, let's say, sensors, periphery around the robot to somehow make it work. And what we did is actually we put everything in one device. So it means every sensor technology which is normally placed around the robot, like vision, all kind of things for safety and everything, we put into one device. And this is actually making the robot cognitive. And what we actually made out of it is like platform. So these platforms, which can actually start develop themselves, because if we put our personal, like our eyes, every day in a different position of our head, we will realize we cannot develop ourselves. And that's the same also for with all the other senses. So the main thinking is, we know already one which was successful with the one device thinking. So here I'm not comparing myself with Steve Jobs so to clarify that. <laughs> He's a great guy. Um, I'm comparing actually the car technologies because how do we actually make robots a multi-purpose device by not doing everything ourselves? And that's exactly the difference we bring. We built a platform where everyone can start building their, let's say, apps, which are functionalities like skills for the robot uh, to enable the robot and make the robot as the, let's, as a multi-purpose device which can actually help us in our homes, in our, like, let's add service works or in the industry works today. And we are showing the same already today, exactly in the industries, like I'm not talking about just the vision, it's actually already a mission because we do have already a lot of robots in place which are doing exactly that. They're doing skilled worker tasks and they're the only one which can actually learn skilled worker task because they have the brain and also the uh, possibilities of it. I'm talking about that AI and cognitive robotics in combination will actually change society in many areas of our lives. Let's make sure together that we don't let ourselves be, let's say, downgraded to servants or AI feeders, but actually 
because we are actually the creative and, and uh, let's say the most, let's say for, how to say it, the most, um, like I would say the most advanced species on the, on the planet. And I would like to leave it this way and actually not create a God above us, but creating actually something which can be helpful again, being again a tool to advance humans in all kinds of ways. And here we are talking exactly about that, that robotics and artificial intelligence, it's actually the key to make the personal helpers and better helpers for us humankind instead of like making something which is telling us what to do. So thank you very much. The most of the pictures are actually <laughs> generated by artificial intelligence. So I, I took <laughs> the advantage of it because I had no, not much time to talk. But this is exactly what I'm trying to talk. That this task which artificial intelligence are doing today are actually the task we would love to keep and do in our future. By, but that's why we have to give them a physical body to enable them to do exactly the things around us which we don't like to do maybe. So thank you very much for your personal time. Thanks. <laughs>